Imagine you're walking into your doctor's office. You've just had your cholesterol tested, and as you sit across from your physician, you're told, your cholesterol is high, we need to lower it. Immediately, you're handed a prescription for statins, and you're told to cut out foods high in saturated fat. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? But what if I told you that the whole narrative around cholesterol, saturated fat, and heart disease might be wrong? What if the idea that lowering your cholesterol through medication and diet isn't the protective measure we think it is? This story begins with a deeper understanding of cholesterol and fat in your body. If you're someone who's heard the advice time and time again that you need to lower your LDL cholesterol to protect your heart, you're not alone. But what if we took a different approach to that advice? What if we understood cholesterol not as a villain, but as an essential component of your health? One that, when managed properly, is crucial for your body's healing and recovery. Today, you're going to discover the truth about cholesterol, why saturated fats are not your enemy, and the crucial role cholesterol plays in your body's health and longevity. We will unpack why your doctor might be wrong about statins and explore what happens when you adopt a high-fat, nutrient-dense diet. By the end of this, you'll know why managing cholesterol differently could be the key to protecting your heart and boosting your overall health. Cholesterol, the body's essential building block. To start, it's important to understand that cholesterol is not inherently harmful. In fact, cholesterol is essential to life itself. Your body needs cholesterol to build cells, produce hormones, and create vitamin D. Without cholesterol, your body would quite literally fall apart. It's as vital as oxygen and water. When we look closer at cholesterol, we see that it's a waxy, fat-like substance that's produced by the liver and found in every cell of your body. It's used to build cell membranes, protect nerves, and produce hormones like estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol. Cholesterol is so vital that every single cell in your body can produce it if needed, but about 75% of your cholesterol is made in the liver, with the rest coming from food. Cholesterol's chemical formula, C27H46, doesn't change between good or bad cholesterol. It's all the same substance. The real difference lies in how it's carried around your body via lipoproteins, and that's where the confusion often starts. Lipoproteins act as taxis that transport cholesterol through your bloodstream. There are different types of these taxis, the most common being LDL, low-density lipoprotein, and HDL, high-density lipoprotein. Doctors often break down cholesterol into good HDL and bad LDL, but here's a reality check. Cholesterol doesn't change its nature depending on which lipoprotein is carrying it. Both HDL and LDL have crucial jobs to do. LDL helps carry cholesterol to cells where it's needed, while HDL helps remove cholesterol from your bloodstream and returns it to the liver for recycling. Both are essential for your body's normal functioning. Now imagine being told that your LDL cholesterol is too high and your doctor recommends lowering it with statins. The goal is simple, prevent heart disease. But let's pause for a moment and think, is LDL cholesterol really the villain it's made out to be? LDL has been branded the bad cholesterol because high levels of LDL are often associated with heart disease. However, research has shown that the relationship between LDL cholesterol and heart disease is not as clear-cut as we've been led to believe. For example, a 2010 study that analyzed data from 192 countries found something surprising. Countries with higher average cholesterol levels actually had lower rates of heart disease. The fear of saturated fat-raising cholesterol is a story many of us have heard for decades. You've probably been told to cut down on foods like butter, cheese, and red meat because they're high in saturated fat, which supposedly clogs arteries and leads to heart attacks. But is that really the case? Dr. Zoe Harcum, a world-leading nutrition expert, has spent decades researching this topic. According to her, there's no clear evidence that saturated fat raises LDL cholesterol to dangerous levels. In fact, the idea that eating saturated fat automatically causes your LDL to rise is based on flawed science. The body's relationship with cholesterol is far more complex, and the real cause of heart disease might not be what we think. When we eat foods that contain saturated fat such as coconut oil, butter, or meat, our body digests these fats and uses them for energy or stores them for later use. What's interesting is that there's no direct biochemical mechanism that proves saturated fat raises LDL cholesterol. Dr. Harcum challenges the long-held belief that saturated fat and cholesterol are linked to heart disease, pointing out that no credible study has ever shown a direct cause-and-effect relationship between saturated fat intake 
and increased LDL cholesterol or heart disease. Let's take the example of coconut oil, one of the most saturated fat-rich foods on the planet. Despite being 92% saturated fat, there is no conclusive evidence that consuming coconut oil directly leads to increased LDL cholesterol. In fact, populations that consume large amounts of coconut oil such as those in the South Pacific often have lower rates of heart disease than those in Western countries. Dr. Harkham also highlights the French paradox as another example of how the saturated fat-heart disease connection doesn't hold up. In France, people consume high levels of saturated fat in foods like cheese, butter, and red meat, yet the country has one of the lowest rates of heart disease in Europe. If saturated fat was truly the cause of heart disease, we would expect the French to have higher rates of heart attacks, not lower. So, why has saturated fat been vilified for so long? One reason is the misinterpretation of early studies, such as the famous Seven Countries study by Ansel Keys in the 1950s. Keyes' study suggested that countries with higher saturated fat consumption had higher rates of heart disease, but what was often overlooked was that his data excluded countries where high saturated fat intake didn't lead to heart disease like France. This selective data led to the widespread belief that saturated fat was dangerous, a belief that has persisted for decades. Here's the critical piece of information that's often missing in the cholesterol debate. LDL cholesterol isn't harmful. In fact, it's part of your body's repair system. When your arteries suffer damage, whether from inflammation, high blood sugar, or other stressors, LDL is sent to the site to help repair the damage. It's a healing agent, not the enemy. Let's take a closer look at what happens when your arteries become damaged. The inside of your arteries is lined with a thin layer of cells called the endothelium. When this lining becomes inflamed or damaged, due to factors like smoking, high blood pressure, or a poor diet, your body sends LDL cholesterol to the site to repair the damage. Over time, if the damage isn't healed, LDL cholesterol and other substances can accumulate in the artery, forming a plaque. However, the plaque itself isn't the problem. The real issue arises when the plaque becomes unstable and ruptures, leading to the formation of a blood clot. If the clot blocks blood flow to the heart or brain, it can cause a heart attack or stroke. But remember, LDL cholesterol isn't the cause of the damage, it's there to help repair it. So why does cholesterol end up in damaged arteries, creating plaques? The truth is, it's there to help fix the damage. Think of it like firefighters at a burning building. You wouldn't blame the firefighters for causing the fire, but you would expect to see them at the scene. The same goes for LDL cholesterol. It's at the scene of the damage, but it's not the cause. In this context, lowering LDL cholesterol with statins might not be the best approach. If LDL is part of your body's natural repair system, artificially lowering it could impair your body's ability to heal itself. This is why many people who take statins experience side effects like muscle pain, cognitive issues, and fatigue. Dwayne Graveline, a former astronaut and physician, wrote about his own experience with statins in his book. Graveline described how he developed severe memory loss after being prescribed statins. He eventually stopped taking them, and his memory returned. When he was convinced to go back on statins, the memory issues resurfaced, confirming his suspicion that the medication was the cause. Graveline's story is just one of many, and it highlights the potential risks of lowering cholesterol too much. The problem with statins. Let's talk about statins for a moment. Statins are one of the most commonly prescribed medications to lower cholesterol. They work by blocking an enzyme in the liver that helps produce cholesterol, but are they the magic pill they're made out to be? According to Dr. Harcomb, the benefits of statins are often overstated while the side effects are downplayed. In fact, if you're one of the few people who might benefit from statins, the research suggests that you may only gain a few extra days of life over a five-year period. That's right, taking statins for five years might only extend your life by a few days. One reason for this is that statins don't address the root cause of heart disease. As we've discussed, cholesterol is not the enemy, it's part of your body's natural repair process. By lowering cholesterol with statins, you might be reducing a marker of heart disease, but you're not addressing the underlying issues, such as inflammation or poor metabolic health. The side effects of statins are another concern. Many people who take statins experience muscle pain, fatigue, and cognitive issues like memory loss. This is because cholesterol is essential for brain function. Your brain is made up of about 60% fat, and it relies heavily on cholesterol to build new cells and maintain communication between neurons. 
when you lower cholesterol too much, it can impair your brain's ability to function properly. There's also the issue of diabetes. Statins have been shown to raise blood sugar levels and increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. This is especially concerning because high blood sugar is one of the main contributors to heart disease. So, in an effort to reduce heart disease risk by lowering cholesterol, statins may actually be increasing the risk by raising blood sugar. If the potential benefits of statins are so small and the risks so high, why are they still prescribed so widely? Part of the answer lies in the pharmaceutical industry, which has a vested interest in promoting statins as a solution to heart disease. Lipitor, one of the most popular statins, has earned its manufacturer Pfizer over $130 billion since its introduction. With so much money at stake, it's no wonder that statins continue to be promoted as a must-have treatment for high cholesterol. The High Fat Diet and Heart Health So if lowering cholesterol with statins isn't the answer, what is? This is where the high-fat, nutrient-dense diet comes into play. Contrary to popular belief, adopting a high-fat diet can actually improve heart health. But, we're not talking about just any fats. We're talking about natural fats. Those found in animal products like grass-fed beef, pastured eggs, and full-fat dairy, as well as in healthy oils like coconut and olive oil. When you switch to a high-fat diet, your body starts using fat for energy instead of carbohydrates, a state known as ketosis. This doesn't just help with weight management, it can reduce inflammation, improve blood sugar levels, and yes, even protect your heart. One reason why a high-fat diet is so beneficial is that it reduces your reliance on carbohydrates, which are often the real culprit in heart disease. When you eat a diet high in refined carbohydrates and sugar, your blood sugar levels spike, leading to inflammation and damage to your arteries. Over time, this can increase your risk of heart disease, by cutting out processed carbs and replacing them with healthy fats, you reduce inflammation and give your body the nutrients it needs to repair itself. Fats like omega-3s found in fish, grass-fed meat and flaxseed are particularly beneficial for heart health because they help reduce inflammation and protect the lining of your arteries. It's important to note that not all fats are created equal. While natural fats found in whole foods are beneficial, processed seed oils like corn oil, soybean oil, and canola oil are highly inflammatory and should be avoided. These oils are often found in processed foods and have been shown to contribute to chronic inflammation, which is a key driver of heart disease. The Fiber Myth Is fiber really necessary? Now let's shift gears and talk about another topic that's often debated, fiber. For years we've been told that fiber is essential for good health, particularly for digestion and gut health. The mainstream message is that fiber-rich foods, especially those from whole grains, vegetables, and legumes, are crucial for keeping our digestive system running smoothly. But is fiber really as important as it's made out to be? Dr. Zoe Harkham strongly disagrees with the notion that fiber is essential. In fact, she suggests that the emphasis on fiber might be one of the biggest dietary myths out there. First, let's understand what fiber is. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that our bodies cannot digest. There are two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. Soluble fiber dissolves in water and can help lower blood sugar and cholesterol levels, while insoluble fiber adds bulk to your stool and helps move waste through the digestive tract. Sounds good in theory, right? But here's the catch. Just because fiber passes through your system doesn't mean it's necessary for good health. Dr. Harkham points out that humans have no essential requirement for carbohydrate and fiber is just a type of carbohydrate that we can't even digest. So why is there such a push for us to consume fiber? The belief that fiber is necessary for digestive health comes from the idea that it helps sweep the intestines, preventing constipation and other digestive issues. However, this isn't necessarily true for everyone. Many people who eat low-fiber, high-fat diets, particularly those who follow a ketogenic or carnivore diet, report excellent digestion without the need for large amounts of fiber. Dr. Harkham suggests that fiber may not even be beneficial for gut health. In fact, for some people, especially those with digestive issues like irritable bowel syndrome IBS, consuming too much fiber can make symptoms worse. Fiber can cause bloating, gas, and discomfort in people whose digestive systems are sensitive to it. Moreover, if fiber is supposed to be so essential, why do people who avoid it entirely, like those on a strict carnivore diet, thrive without it? These individuals often report improved digestion, less bloating, and more regular bowel movements after cutting out fiber. In reality, the body's digestive system is perfectly capable of functioning well without a high-fiber diet. 
what it truly needs is the right balance of nutrients from whole natural foods, primarily protein and healthy fats, which support gut health in ways fiber cannot. In short, while fiber may be helpful for some people, it's not the essential nutrient we've been led to believe it is. The idea that we need to consume high amounts of fiber to be healthy is just another dietary myth, one that's been used to promote foods like whole grains and processed fiber supplements. What happens when you lower cholesterol? Too much. Lowering cholesterol too much, either through diet or medication, can have unintended consequences. Your body needs cholesterol for more than just cell health. It's a precursor for many vital hormones, including those that regulate stress and energy. If you lower cholesterol too much, you might end up with hormonal imbalances, fatigue, or even a weakened immune system. One thing that's often overlooked is the impact of low cholesterol on your brain. Your brain is made up of about 60% fat, and it relies heavily on cholesterol to function properly. That's why one of the most common side effects of statins is cognitive decline. When you lower cholesterol too much, your brain can suffer, leading to memory loss and difficulty concentrating. In addition to its role in brain health, cholesterol is also essential for the production of vitamin D. When your skin is exposed to sunlight, cholesterol in your skin is converted into vitamin D, which plays a critical role in bone health, immune function, and mood regulation. If you're lowering your cholesterol too much, you might be inadvertently lowering your body's ability to produce enough vitamin D, which can have serious consequences for your health. Vitamin D deficiency has been linked to a wide range of health problems, including osteoporosis, depression, and autoimmune diseases. In fact, research has shown that people with low levels of vitamin D are more likely to suffer from heart disease, the very condition that statins are supposed to prevent. This is why it's important to maintain healthy cholesterol levels rather than focusing on lowering them to the lowest possible number. The connection between cholesterol and vitamin D. Here's another fascinating link, cholesterol and vitamin D. Did you know that cholesterol is essential for your body to produce vitamin D? When your skin is exposed to sunlight, cholesterol is transformed into vitamin D, which plays a critical role in your immune system and overall health. Vitamin D is not just a nutrient, it acts more like a hormone in the body. It regulates calcium absorption, helps maintain strong bones, and supports immune function. Without enough cholesterol, your body wouldn't be able to produce adequate vitamin D, leading to deficiencies that could weaken your immune system and leave you vulnerable to illnesses. Interestingly, cholesterol levels naturally fluctuate throughout the year, often peaking in winter when sun exposure is lower. This seasonal variation suggests that your body produces more cholesterol during periods of low sunlight to compensate for the lack of vitamin D synthesis. So, if you have your cholesterol tested in the winter, it might be higher than during the summer, not because of poor health, but because your body is simply doing what it's supposed to do. The connection between cholesterol and vitamin D highlights just how complex and interdependent the systems in your body are. Lowering cholesterol artificially disrupts this balance, potentially leading to a host of other health issues. The takeaway, focus on real food, not cholesterol. The key takeaway here is simple. Cholesterol is not the enemy. Instead of focusing on lowering your cholesterol, Focus on eating real, nutrient-dense foods. Avoid processed carbohydrates and sugars, and don't be afraid of natural fats. Your body is an incredible machine that knows how to regulate itself when given the right tools. Eat whole foods, get plenty of natural fats, and allow your cholesterol to do its job, keeping your body healthy and strong. You've now learned the truth about cholesterol and how it plays a critical role in your body's repair system. As you move forward, consider questioning the mainstream advice that tells you to lower your cholesterol at all costs. By focusing on whole foods and adopting a high-fat diet, you can protect your heart, support your brain, and improve your overall health in ways that go far beyond simply managing a number on a blood test. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear your thoughts or questions in the comments below. See you in the next video.